Yellowstone National Park Superintendent Dan Wenk says that the only way to solve overcrowding problems in the world's oldest national park is to learn more about the people using it. Park Service officials are beginning a new project now to help collect that information this summer. MTN's John Scherer explains how it will work. And how do you feel if you can pull right into a parking space at Old Faithful or if you have to wait 3 to 5 minutes or 10 to 15 minutes? When Yellowstone National Park hit 4 million visitors in 2015, complaints about overcrowding started to be heard. And the problem was people wouldn't leave the parking area until they'd used the restroom and there weren't enough restrooms. We brought on more restrooms to alleviate um, some of the, the pressure, some of the concerns. That was a direct result of people speaking out. But Yellowstone doesn't want to wait for complaints. It wants it's to understand from our visitors what their experience is like and how they move through the park. This summer, some visitors to Yellowstone National Park will be asked questions about their visit, but others will have a completely different experience. People are going to be handed a digital tablet. They'll use it to record their experiences in the park. For instance, to show how long they stay at certain places and how long it takes them to travel someplace else. And then as they're wrapping up their trip, to leave the tablets at visitor centers and or at entrances. The surveys will wrap up in September and then... It informs the decision making. And all of this information is really will help us better understand visitor management in Yellowstone. And it certainly is a concern for the business people here for the sustainability of their businesses. So what might come out of all this? All options are on the table. Are, is there going to be some kind of limitation on visits to parks, to, the, to Yellowstone? Is there going to be some kind of reservation system that we're going to try to spread the visits out? And of course the parking situation in the, inside the park itself. Unlike Glacier and other popular parks, Yellowstone doesn't have a shuttle bus system. And what kind of a shuttle system? How would it work? What would you be willing to pay? Wink says don't expect any recommendations until at least April of 2019. Costello says whatever is decided will require careful coordination. It's not going to be just the towns or the communities that surround the park or the park itself or the forest. The end goal I think is the same goal we've always had which is to protect and to preserve Yellowstone National Park. Wink cautions that while the park will work to make visiting Yellowstone more enjoyable, it won't force people into a cookie cutter experience. I want them to know that almost any expectation can be met, but I'm not here to try to set their expectations for what they should do when they get to the park. In Yellowstone National Park, I'm John Shearer for MTN News. Park officials also plan to talk to business owners and residents of the Gateway communities around Yellowstone to include their ideas about handling the growing number of visitors. All right, let's send on over.